Welcome to With Love Bridal Boutique. Today we're talking all about what to expect during a bridal appointment. Now With Love as a company has two locations in the Ottawa area. The main hub is located in Canada at 66 Hearst Way and the main hub is our sample boutique. So all of the dresses that you're going to find at With Love Bridal are sample gowns. The sizing is all over the map. The idea here is that you are going to be able to try on different silhouettes, different dresses, and regardless of the size, we clip it onto you, we get the idea, and then we order it for you in your size and in your color preference. So when you're trying on sample gowns, the option to order the dress in different colors is often available. So there's just different customizations that can come into play there when you're ordering a dress. At our Renewed With Love Boutique, which is our outlet store, it's located in Stittsville at 1501 Stittsville Main Street. Now that store is different because it is our outlet off the rack boutique. So all of the dresses that you're gonna find there are organized by size. So a bride's going to go in, try on whatever's in her size, if there's a gown that you love, you take it home the same day. So the idea between the two different stores is that Renewed With Love, our outlet boutique, can really accommodate brides who have maybe a shorter period of time to their wedding day. They don't have time to wait for a special order to come in, so that's a really great option there. And you can also get some really amazing, beautiful, brand new samples off the rack at a discounted price. If time is not of the essence and you've def and you've got, you know, about a year is pretty standard to start looking, if you have the time to order a dress, then With Love Bridal Boutique will definitely be a great place for you to have lots of options to try. So With Love as a company can accommodate brides with budgets going up to 4000 So oftentimes when brides come into the boutique, they've never tried a wedding dress on in their life. So it's really difficult to know exactly what to expect. So to start off, I just wanted to outline a little bit about what to bring with you. So a good idea and something that we recommend is for brides to bring a strapless bra. It just helps when trying on different necklines or silhouettes or strapless gowns to not have the bra straps in the way. A lot of times brides will want to bring a pair of shoes. Now, we don't recommend trying dresses on with shoes just because we do have a pedestal that's about four inches in height. It will help you get the full look of the gown with the skirt laying nicely on the floor, but also it makes it a little bit easier to get in and out of dresses when you're not wearing heels. But if you do bring a pair of shoes that is likely close to the size of heel you'll be wearing on your wedding day, that's going to be really helpful when you're doing your measurements and it might save you during alterations in the long run. Some brides do like to bring um, pictures of dresses that they've looked at online or in magazines that have caught their attention and that's a good thing to be able to show your bridal consultant. It'll kind of help them get an idea of what you might be looking for or what you don't like. So but that way when you're going through and choosing dresses, it just makes it a little bit more streamlined and a little bit more direct on what you're looking for. And of course, lots of brides like to bring their family or a few close friends or I even have brides that like to come alone. I've seen it all, so just make sure if you are bringing some people with you that it's some close family members or relatives or friends, people that know you really well and that are just there to support you and help you find your wedding gown for your special day. The larger the group, you might be starting to worry about different people's opinions on your wedding dress, and you really just have to think whose opinion really matters. At the end of the day, it's always going to be the bride's opinion that matters the most, but of course, it is nice to have a little bit of outlook from the people who love you. So entering into your bridal appointment, you will be first of all greeted by your consultant. So a consultant is there to really help you sort of focus on what you're looking for, really help pick out what dresses are going to suit your vision the best. So to start off, if you have no idea what kind of silhouette you're looking for, the great idea is maybe start with about five dresses, all of different silhouettes where you can try them on and say, okay, I know I definitely don't want something that is so fitted on the hip, that's gonna leave you with more of an A-line or a ball gown maybe. Or if you know you definitely wanna have something with a lot of volume, it could leave you with maybe a mermaid or a trumpet or even a ball gown depending on where you want that volume to be. So once you've started out with a couple dresses to try, the main important thing is to be able to analyze each dress. So once you have a dress on, it's really important to think about what you like about the dress and what you don't like about the dress. This is gonna help your bridal consultant really focus on all of the things that you definitely want and all of the things that you really don't like. With each dress that you try, it's going to eliminate a bunch of other dresses with all of the same qualities. So that's really how you 
get down to business and figure out what you want and what you don't. That being said, once you've tried a gown that you've found some qualities about it that you really don't like, that's gonna help your bridal consultant really take note of that and go out there and find you dresses that are only suiting your taste. After all, your bridal consultant knows the inventory of the store, knows the silhouettes, knows what looks good on different body types, and knows how to fulfill visions of things that you've described. So that's why they're likely gonna be asking you a lot of questions to help figure out and narrow down what it is exactly that you're looking for. So just to talk about some of the silhouettes, I just wanted to give a little bit of a definition of them just so that we can see what silhouette goes with what terminology. So an A-line dress is going to be quite fitted through the bust and then follow that down towards the waist and then it will flow out at the hip area where it creates almost an uppercase A silhouette with the skirt and that's where it gets the name A-line. If you're looking for a ball gown, that's going to be a dress where it's quite fitted through the bust and then has a defined waist and then it will poof out into a fuller skirt. This is where you can get a lot of volume and that sort of princess look. There also is a drop waist ball gown, which is the same idea. The only thing is the bodice is going to be fitted through the, the bust, the waist, and go further down just to the top of the hip. That's going to create a little bit more of a body shape, and then it'll also go out into that full skirt. If you're looking for a sheath silhouette, that's a dress that's going to be fitted through the bust and the waist again, but then once it gets to the hip, the skirt's just going to go straight down. It just creates a really streamlined look. Now going more into the fitted silhouettes of wedding gowns, we have a fit and flare. So a fit and flare is going to be fitted through the bust, waist, and hip area. And then once it gets just to the bottom of the hip, it's going to start to just flare out sort of soft and naturally. There's no defined sort of cutoff where the flare is going to start. This just creates a really, really elongating, very soft silhouette that's very natural and no real volume to it. You have a mermaid dress. So a mermaid is going to be, again, fitted through the bust, waist, hip, and then once it gets past the hip, it'll go even fitted towards the knee, and then it will have a bit more of a dramatic flare out. This is going to create a very, very fitted, fitted silhouette all the way up, and then a little bit more drama at the bottom. For a trumpet gown, it's very similar to a mermaid, except for the fit of the dress doesn't go as far down. So it's gonna be fitted through the bust, waist, and hip, and then right after the hip, it's going to have a bit more of a dramatic flare out than a fit and flare, but not be fitted as low as a mermaid. So there's lots of different silhouettes that are gonna suit different body types, and that's up to you and your consultant to really figure out what you feel comfortable in, what you can imagine for the day, and what looks good on your body type as well. Now there's so many different components to a dress. You can get different sort of necklines with different sort of silhouettes. The options are really endless for what you're looking for. So with every dress you try, it's really great to just say, okay, I know I'm definitely not wanting this and definitely liking that. It's just gonna help streamline your search and make it a little bit easier for you. With that being said, we don't really recommend trying on too many dresses. Now what is too many is hard to say, but a lot of times a bride doesn't need to try on more than 10 wedding gowns. And that's because if your bridal consultant is helping you correctly, they'll be able to take the first gown and the second gown you try. The first gown it's difficult because you try it on and then you don't really have anything to compare it to. So you're like, okay, I like it, but I don't really know. And then when you try on another gown, you've got something to compare it to and this is where you can really sort of hone down and define your search, your silhouette, the fabric you're looking for, and the detail. And by Dress number three, you're likely getting towards more of the full look. So if by the end of the appointment, you've been able to find a dress that makes you feel beautiful, that you can really envision wearing on your wedding day and makes you feel like a bride, then that's really all it takes to say yes to your dress. A lot of brides don't believe that it can be that easy. And like I mentioned before, it really can be overwhelming to try on so many dresses after a certain period of time women can say i don't even know what i like anymore so it's really great to just go to that one first bridal appointment and really focus your efforts on what you're looking for and it can be easier than you think to find the dress of your dreams so now that you found your dream dress it's going to be time for your bridal consultant to do your measurements so what they're going to do is measure around your bust area so the largest part of your bust and your waist so the natural part the narrowest part of your waist area and then your hip and that's going to be the largest part of your hip area 
and with those measurements they are going to then compare them to the designer's size chart. So with the size chart, it's pretty rare that a bride's measurements fall into one size category perfectly. So what they do is kind of compare, okay, maybe your bust is a size six and your waist is measuring a size eight and then your hips are also a size six. So what they're gonna wanna do in this scenario is order you a dress size eight. And that is because when the dress comes in, it's going to fit perfectly in your waist area but then it's gonna be bigger in your bust and in your hip. So what you have to do at this point is get alterations done to make the top of the dress and the bottom of the dress fit perfectly. That way, it's, it's always easy to take a dress in. You can't always take a dress out. So you always have to go with the largest size, whatever you're measuring on the size chart, and then alter the dress to fit you properly afterwards. And so at With Love Bridal Boutique, we have a seamstress in store who is amazing at tailoring your bridal gown to your body. It's gonna to wanna to fit you perfectly absolutely everywhere. You want that dress to be molded to your shape and that just won't happen all the time with an off the rack dress. So even at Renewed, we often send our brides to a seamstress because again, putting on a dress in a size, it's very likely that it might be too big in the hip or too big in the waist or at one of the points during the measure measuring process. Pick a size with your bridal consultant, then you can talk about height. If you have the shoes, we can do a height measurement depending on the designer and what they offer, or you can just wait until your dress comes in and have a seamstress hem the front of the dress to you. So when you have a dress, a lot of them do come long, so you're gonna wanna have it cut to a point where it's just drifting on the floor. It's not dragging and you're not going to be able to trip over it. And then you can also talk about the size of train that you have. So if it's a dress that has a longer train coming out the back, the popular thing to do at night is to have a bustle added. So what this is gonna do is, it's a couple of ties underneath the skirt and often a loop and a button that go over top of the skirt and that's going to help pick your train up at night so that way you can walk around more freely you can dance no one have to worry about people stepping on your dress so often for your ceremony you've got a beautiful long train and for pictures and then at night you can have your dress bustled and again that is something that our seamstress will do for you okay so then other details that you want to work into your full bridal look and into the price so once you have your dress figured out, then you want to see if you would like to add a veil or you want a headpiece, some sort of clip or comb or headband. Um, accessories do add on to your bridal look. So don't forget about earrings. If you want a necklace, bracelet, shoes, it's all part of the look and you want to make sure that you're incorporating that as, long, as well as alterations into your budget. Now also to complete your bridal look, don't forget to add into your budget your accessories. So whether you're looking for a veil or some sort of headpiece, um, earrings or necklace and bracelet, as well as your shoes, and don't forget alterations. So you wanna have that in mind when you're coming up with your bridal budget. Those are just a couple of things to keep in mind while shopping for your dream wedding dress. I hope this video was helpful and helped kind of pinpoint the idea behind a bridal appointment. I give you a little bit more of an idea of what an appointment is going to look like so that you can prepare yourself mentally, emotionally, and be ready to find your dream dress when you come into the store.